Um, so I wanted to ask you a question about your private sector experience. Um, you know, often in the private sector, things run more smoothly and, and faster than in the public sector. Uh, if you were elected governor of Jakarta, how would you navigate the bureaucracy to get things done? Would you would you try to be a reformer or would you kind of work within the system to do that? I'm a big believer of working within the system. Uh, I think um, a lot of people have criticized uh, bureaucrats to be slow, uh, to be, uh, I guess, lack of motivations. And I think that is the biggest job for every leader of bureaucracy to, to motivate and, and to empower uh, the bureaucrats. Uh, there's no way you can work outside the system. Uh, it will take some time, but it will be a painful process, but you need to, to really work uh, hand in hand with them. And I would uh, definitely, uh, the, the way that I learned from private sectors is you need to have evidence base, you need to have result oriented, and you need to have KPIs, um, the key performance indi indicators for, for all uh, your, your workforce or all the people who are working for, for the government as bureaucrats. And they also need to be, uh, I guess, uh, I, I, people use the terms a stick and carrot. Uh, I would rather use uh, rewards and, and uh, uh, sanctions in terms of how they, they provide, and I would give them uh, enough time, adequate time to be able to prove themselves. Some people are slow adapter, and this uh, type of people we need to put in, in different bucket, but some of the really good ones, and it's normally 2080. Out of the 100% of your uh, uh, people working for you, 20 are really good, and they would drive the 80% of the result. Uh, and I would concentrate on this 20% uh, percent of your workforce, 80%. You, you let them adopt, and hopefully this 20 will grow to 30, 50, and, and, and then a uh, majority of your uh, bureaucrats would be very, very professional, pretty much like in the private sector. So would you have a sort of implement a performance-based evaluation system? I would, definitely. Definitely, I would. And, and that uh, evaluations would be made very transparent, and it's also 360 not like the normal evaluations whereby you're just evaluating your subordinates. In my private sector's uh, experience, the subordinates also have a chance to evaluate their, uh, uh, basically their bosses. And this is, has changed, this 360 degrees evaluations have changed the entire mindset of, of bosses, how they could be um, uh, not only bossy in terms of delegating uh, um, authority or, or delegating uh, uh, jobs to do, but they, they, they also need to be uh, providing as an inspiration and to lead by example. So I've seen this across the 28 companies within our group. Once you empower your uh, people to work within that performance space, uh, they're motivated and they're able to, to perform. Uh, would you do things like, for example, increase pay for people who perform better? I would, uh, definitely. And, and, and I think that's the, uh, one, not, not the only, but one of the way to motivate people. Because some people actually, uh, you know, money-wise have number three or number four in their priority list. But a simple pat on the back saying thank you, uh, appreciate them is, is, is number one or number two. And that's proven time and time again in, in any uh, human resources uh, uh, paper or analysis that getting recognition is, is one of the, uh, uh, the big, big uh, uh, sort of like uh, um, uh, the big thing that uh, every employee is, is actually appreciating. So you also have to be very, very, very careful in terms of uh, treating them because if you treat them with disrespect, if you treat them with um, uh, dishonor, uh, some of these uh, people, even if you're paying them very, very high salary, are, are not going to be motivated. You know, when you answered that question, your face lit up quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you seem to be uh, very passionate about this kind of, um, you know, you didn't call it a carrot and stick. What did you call it? Rewards and. and uh, punishment or incentives or yeah, rewards incentives, and incentives yeah incentives and uh, basically check and balance and some people would know once they're putting into the different bucket uh, they need to either shape up or they need to stay within that bucket and I've seen more and more people are 
are, are actually moving out of that bucket into the, the sort of like the top performers. Okay. Um, if I could get on to the next question about, I wanted to ask you about quality of life issues uh, in Jakarta. Um, you know, it's a really big city. Um, and there is movement to uh, improve transportation and so forth. Um, I was just wondering, what, what are your thoughts on creating um, you know, better quality of life, for example, a better urban life? I'm a marathoner, I'm a long distance runner, and I like to, to run, uh, doing road running. And I could see uh, every uh, Sunday when we have a car-free day, uh, whereby major city, uh, the corridors are actually blocked uh, from cars and, and motorcycles and people could walk. Uh, uh, it's actually full of people. Uh, last Sunday, uh, you could see tremendous amount pouring of people enjoying that, that uh, open space. Jakarta is still lacking in terms of uh, the, uh, the comfort of, of living in Jakarta, even if you compare to some of the cities uh, within uh, Southeast Asia, we're, we're still far behind. So uh, the quality of life is, is, is going to be determined once, uh, I guess, we were able to, uh, to improve their economy, uh, their daily economic struggles that they're facing, the, the high uh, cost of living here that, that they have to face, uh, the open space. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy this morning I have a, a meeting with uh, um, one of the government officials who are in charge of the parks that they intend to create uh, more parks uh, uh, in the city. Uh, that's amazing. And I think uh, we should not just be building uh, office spaces and, and shopping malls, but we also need to, uh, to provide better sidewalks, uh, you know, open spaces and, and parks uh, like, like, like DC. I, I really like uh, how we could, we could run along uh, the river, the Potomac River, and, and spend time uh, in the parks. Okay, so you would uh, create, you know, a situation where people could do more running, more walking, more healthy kind of day-to-day -day activities. Yeah, I think uh, once one of the uh, explanations why we have traffic jam that is so horrendous here is even for one or two kilometers of ride, you know, for instance, I'm going from this building to the building, the next building, like two kilometers away, uh, I, I have to use car because it's no way for me to walk. Although I can walk and I enjoy walking, even with, with this kind of weather. Uh, why? Because there is no uh, conducive environment for me to have um, a safe uh, uh, walk to, to the next building. So uh, I guess we could create a much better, healthier, much healthier and less traffic jam if we could improve all the space and, and encourage people. If you are traveling less than two kilometers, why don't you try walking if it's not raining? <laughs> sure, sure, absolutely. Um, if I could get onto the subject uh, of the digital economy once more, what are your thoughts on, uh, and you touched on this a bit, but what are your thoughts on how government can create uh, an environment, especially for startups to succeed? I think the government is, is trying to build their, their roadmaps. Uh, unfortunately, government sometimes is very slow. Uh, and this is uh, self-criticism also because I, I somewhat was part of the previous government. Uh, whereby we are seeing regulations as a way for government to, to be able to uh, sort of like make sure it is on top of the issues. But the regulation is too slow. And some of this digital uh, initiative and innovations is very, very fast, like um, how the economic, the new uh, economic sharing model uh, is, is fastly changing the landscape of the transportation industry. And, and some, uh, the big names I, I already mentioned, but there, there are also smaller names like Groceria.com, uh, who is providing access to fresh produce uh, at, a, at a cheaper rate and a, at a much better packaging because they are uh, sending all those fresh produce to your homes by way of, uh, um, uh, by way of uh, uh, technology. And, and that's pretty much like uh, Amazon Fresh in the US. Uh, they, they, you know, right on your doorstep, it's there. Uh, we see also uh, innovations in terms of providing uh, much shorter distribution chain. Uh, and, and that's uh, how technology is going to change our life. And the government needs to understand that. Instead of regulate, they need to pretty much uh, 
speak with, with the players and, and offer what kind of regulations do you need because we need to supervise. And technology needs to be empowering the, the people on the grassroots level. If, if the government is not fast enough, you know, they, they're, they're, go they're going to be seen, seen as a hindrance to this, this new uh, evolutions of, of the, what we call the fourth wave of the industrial revolutions by way of, of digital economy. So do you think you might do something like, um, for example, Singapore has created incentives to um, you know, uh, in, in improve the situation for internet startups. Would, you, would that be on your agenda I, as well? Yeah, I would, I would definitely uh, um, initiate um, uh, sort of like a startup fund. Uh, I'm part of the Angel EQ network that uh, is initiated by um, uh, technology leader uh, Shinta Bubu and a few other big names like Eric Tohir and Tony Fernandez. Uh, I'd like uh, for the government to also, uh, you know, help in many ways that we can, like providing capital. For instance, the government has uh, a problem in absorbing their own budget, and I think if they could. Uh, also dedicate some of this uh, funding to to create this uh, 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 needed financing and capital for, for the startup, that would be great. Secondly, I provide uh, space, working space, because now the startups is all over the place and I think it's not efficient. Uh, I would dedicate like few of this government uh, uh, assets to be turned into co-working space uh, so that uh, they could use at a very uh, affordable rate and, and to start uh, new businesses. Third, I would create uh, training uh, for these startups and, and I would create um, uh, a sort of like a bridge uh, with, with people in Silicon Valley or people in Singapore or, or in, in China so that they could collaborate and they could access uh, to each other field of expertise. Uh, that 